Then on Sports Central, I'll be giving you guys my preseason USFL power rankings as we head into week one. And in case if any of you guys do not know what the USFL is, this is a spring football league getting started here this weekend. It's got eight teams in it, kind of similar to the XFL. If you remember that a couple of years ago uh, when the XFL tried to have a relaunch and uh, that was in the spring of 2020. Of course, that was a tough spring to do it because the second half of the XFL season got canceled and the XFL is planning on another relaunch in 2023. But in the meantime, this spring, we got the USFL starting up here and this is a league that I think definitely shows potential. So I'll be doing coverage on it over the course of the next three months as this season runs. It runs through, I think, early July. And once again, it's got eight teams. So it's a pretty small league. There's four games every weekend and I'll be doing previews and coverage on it. But that said, I'll be giving you guys my week one rankings here today for this league, kind of looking at all the rosters and uh, kind of seeing which teams that I think show potential in this league to, uh, to win it all. And some of the teams that I think definitely have got uh, some work to do. But that said, let's go ahead and get into it. With that, number eight is gonna be the Houston Gamblers. This is um, a team that, and of course, with this being a startup league, they had a whole draft that happened a few weeks ago. And we saw, um, of course, several players that haven't quite made it to the NFL or are looking to make progression into a point where they can start in the NFL. And that's kind of what the USFL is made of is players that have obviously graduated college but are trying to get back into the NFL. So uh, yeah, the Houston Gamblers, I got this team at number eight. They got Clayton Thorson, a former Northwestern quarterback who actually had a, a great career with Northwestern. And he definitely shows potential. I think as a quarterback, he definitely is uh, somebody that can lead this team to a good season. But otherwise, this team, I mean, offensive lineman's got some talent. Running back core does have depth. Uh, you got Dawkins, uh, Whaley, and Thompson as the lead running backs for this team. Uh, the receiving core is where I do think this, uh, this team does have, um, they don't have much depth there. Uh, so for Clayton Thorson coming in, obviously a brand new season. You're playing with a whole bunch of players that you probably didn't know before coming into this league. Um, and the receiving core, it lacks size, doesn't have much depth either. So that is a main concern of this offense. But I do think offensively, the gamblers do show uh, some potential. Defensively, that's where I see a main concern though. I mean, they don't have much experience defensively and they could have trouble with size defensively as well, especially in the secondary uh, when you're going up against some receivers. I mean, this team just does not have a lot of uh, good depth and a lot of experience defensively. So the gamblers, I mean, this is a team, obviously, I mean, it's it's tough to tell right now uh, which teams are going to be good and which teams probably won't be because we have not seen any of these teams play ever before. So it's kind of a shot in the dark trying to predict which teams will be good and which teams aren't. But just basing it off of the rosters and the talent that we've seen, uh, I feel like Houston is going to be uh, a team towards the bottom of this league. In week one, they're facing off against the Michigan Panthers, uh, which is our number seven, the Panthers here. This is a team that's got Shea Patterson. They drafted, I think, I think Shea Patterson was the number one overall pick in this draft. Um, yeah, Shea Patterson, Michigan quarterback, uh, former Michigan quarterback. He played pretty well for the Wolverines, and he's uh, playing for a Michigan team in the USFL with the Panthers here. And they also have got um, former Memphis and then Denver Broncos quarterback Paxton Lynch. Paxton really, he didn't make it in the NFL. I mean, he was in the NFL, obviously, but he didn't really – I mean, he played a couple seasons for the Broncos, but didn't quite uh, get get the full-time starting position in, in the long term. So uh, we'll see how the quarterback situation is here. You got two very interesting quarterbacks, Shea Pedersen and Paxton Lynch, uh, two pretty commonly known names as well. Uh, they also got former Indiana running back Stevie Scott, who shows potential. They got Jeff Badette, um, former Kentucky, Oklahoma wide receiver as well. So Offensively, this team does show potential. Um, even defensively, they got some good talent um, in the linebacking in the linebacking core. But on the defensive line and in the secondary, they don't have a lot of. I mean, they got talent, but they just don't have any big standout players. It looks to be as of right now. So I've got the Michigan Panthers at number seven, and I think number seven and number eight here with the Panthers and the Gamblers. Those are clearly the bottom two for me right now. And then once you get from like six to about four. Um, I'd say I'd say from six to three in my rankings, they could be in any particular order. And that said, number six is going to be the New Jersey Generals. Uh, this is a team that's got a couple of quarterbacks in Ben Holmes, DeAndre Johnson. Uh, we'll see. It looks like Ben Holmes is going to start for this team. Uh, but it looks like I wouldn't be surprised if they split time at the beginning of the season just to see who uh, is, is better fit for the job. So uh, they also got former Ohio State running back Mike Weber or Weber. Um, definitely he's. 
a player that shows potential looking at, at his stats in college. Uh, Gavante Turpin, former TCU receiver, uh, looks to get back into the scene as well. So uh, lots of interesting storylines here with the generals. You got two quarterbacks uh, that we don't know too much about. And then he got, of course, a great running back, a great receiver who's looking to get back in the game. And uh, receiving core does have uh, some good depth for the generals. So offensively, I like how this team looks. But defensively, um, on the defensive line and the linebacking situ uh, situation, I do uh, see a lack of experience there. So potentially that could be uh, something to keep an eye on there. Defensive secondary, though, uh, does look good for New Jersey. But, yeah, this is also a team that I feel like, I mean, the Generals are a solid six or maybe even number five for me in my rankings. Um, I think this team shows potential, but I just don't know if they've got the, the potential to go on and be the best team in this league. Number five is going to be the Pittsburgh Molars, and this is a team that is really tough to predict. I'd probably say the most, uh, the team that could be definitely a hit or a miss in this league. And I've looked over several uh, preseason rankings for the USFL, and I've seen Pittsburgh ranked in the top three multiple times. I even saw one where they were ranked number two. But for me, I just don't I just don't know about this team. They got, I mean, we just don't know a whole lot about this team in general. I mean, Josh Love, Kyle Laletta as well as their quarterbacks. Um, both of them definitely, I feel like, show potential. But this team, they could, be the wet, or they could be the best or the worst for sure. I mean, it could go either way for, for the Maulers. Running back situation does lack some depth. They don't have any big uh, standouts of the running back position. They got plenty of depth, though, um, in the receiving core. So the passing game is going to be something to watch out for from the Mullers. Uh, defensively, they got a strong uh, D-line. Lining back in core also looks good. Secondary, they do have a lack of size and experience, so that could be an issue for Pittsburgh in the secondary there. But, I mean, this team, they show potential for sure. I do feel like this team, I mean, they could be the best or the worst in this league once again. We just don't know a whole lot about them right now. Number four is going to be the Philadelphia Stars. This is a team that's got Brian Scott, um, a quarterback from a D3 school in California. Uh, so it's going to be very interesting. I'm very intrigued to see how he does. I've also seen the Stars ranked uh, pretty highly in several in several rankings, and I've got them at number four. Uh, I feel like this is a team that, I mean, Brian Scott wants. We don't, we don't know too much about him. I mean, he played at a, at a D3 college, so obviously this is going to be a higher level, a much higher level versus a D3 school. So we'll see how he adjusts to that. Then you got Matt Colburn. You got Darnell Holland as well, the top running backs on this team. Uh, definitely two talented players. And the receiving course got a couple of standout players. You got DeAndre Overton and Brennan Eagles, two uh, receivers that definitely show potential. So, I mean, you got the Stars, this is a team that shows some good talent offensively. Um, but they do have a few uncertainties as well based off of the quarterback situation. I'd say that's the main question mark here is Brian Scott going to be able to lead this team to, um, to, to some big wins in this league. And I feel like uh, they definitely they show potential for sure, but uh, it, it's, it's tough to say uh, how they're going to do there. Defensively, they show potential for sure. You got um, the defensive line and linebacking, linebacking positions, they look excellent for this team. Secondary also looks good, but it's not a standout position um, or a standout area. So, uh, but yeah, Philadelphia, definitely a team to keep an eye on. Number three is going to be the New Orleans Breakers, and this is a team that I feel like is being slept on by a lot of, a lot of analysts. Um, the Breakers this is a team that I've seen ranked in the bottom half of multiple, um, of multiple rankings. And so I do have the Breakers ranked fairly high in comparison to a lot of um, a lot of rankings out there. But I feel like this team has got tremendous potential. Kyle Slaughter really like him quarterback. Uh, he definitely shows potential. You got Larry Rose the third in the backfield. I like him as well, although the running back position does lack some depth. The receiving core is stacked with talent. That's for sure. I mean, you got Johnny Dixon, quick receiver there, um, who definitely is extremely talented. Then. You also got Sean Poindexter, um, who is a tall red zone target for sure. He's definitely got to keep an eye on as well. Receiving core looks great for this team. Offensively, they could be one of the best. Defensive line, they do show potential there. They got uh, Bellamy, the former Georgia defensive lineman, standout. So uh, keep an eye on him. But the linebacking situation and secondary do show uh, do show some uncertainty. But then again, what team doesn't have uncertainty going into this league where I mean, none of these players have ever, likely ever played with each other. I mean, so it's it's tough to predict how these teams are going to do just based off of the rosters. But um, I do feel like the Breakers do show some potential talent-wise. Number two is going to be the Birmingham Stallions. And number two and number one on this list 
uh, certainly are my favorites to win this league, especially. I mean, number one looks great. I just, I'll just i just say that right away. But Birmingham, uh, this team, they got former FIU quarterback Alex Mago. He looks really good. Uh, definitely a player that shows talent there, some potential for sure. Uh, the running back core has got some great depth. And, of course, you got uh, the receiving core. This team may have the best receiving core in this league. Uh, you got Victor Bolden Jr., uh, Peyton Ramsey as well. Um, both of them have got some great experience in the league. I mean, ex especially um, Bolden. So, I mean, it's uh, we'll see we'll see how this team does. I, I think this team offensively has got some tremendous talent. Defensively, uh, this team has got some great depth um, in the, in the uh, defensive line and the linebacking core. Secondary looks good as well. They got some good size there. So, I mean, this Dallians, this is a team that I feel like is also a bit slept on. They definitely show some major potential, and I feel like this team is – um, going to be the main rival to our number one, which is going to be the Tampa Bay Bandits. This team has got some tremendous talent, both sides of the ball. You got Jordan Te'amu, um, who is, I mean, he's an excellent quarterback. We saw him back in the XFL in 2020, played for the, I think he was the St. Louis Battle Hawks. He definitely uh, was one of the best quarterbacks, if not the best, in that league when it did run. So this is huge for the Bandits having him. Um, he definitely, I feel like, is a quarterback that we could very well see in the NFL uh, if he if he does well in this league, he's already had a couple of chances with multiple teams in the NFL since the XFL um, happened back in 2020. He hasn't really gotten a starting position yet, but yeah, you never know if he does well with this team that just boosts his resume. But uh, they also got great running backs and Juwan Washington, uh, B.J. Emmons as well. Then he got uh, the receiver, the experienced receiver there, and Eli Rogers. Uh, they got the best defensive line of the league for sure. Stacked with talent there. Linebacking core, secondary, both show potential. And this team is widely thought of as the favorite to win um, this league right now. I mean, I've seen, once again, multiple rankings, and almost all of them have the Bandits as number one. I mean, this team, the quarterback situation looks great. There's some good some good confidence with, with this team for sure. I mean, this team really shows some good potential. So I'm going to go with the Bandits as my number one as we head into week one. But that said... I appreciate you guys watching as always. Subscribe for more if you guys um, are new to the channel. And if you guys want to see some ex or some uh, USFL content, I'll be covering uh, the games week by week. So I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. I'll be doing rankings on the weekly as well. So, yeah, appreciate you guys watching as always. Stay tuned for more from All Sports Central. Catch you all in the next one.